So here we are, the second Sunday of Lent. And first Sunday of Lent, we always have a gospel reading, which is about uh, Jesus being driven out into the wilderness and 40 days in the wilderness, which on the first Sunday of Lent makes all kinds of sense because it's sort of an explanation for what is Lent, why do we have it, and, and answer some of those questions about this season. And then by the time we get to the second Sunday of Lent, and for the next three weeks, Jesus is now headed toward Jerusalem. And we know how that's going to go once he gets there. His eye, his heart is set on Jerusalem. So by this point in the story, in the Gospel of Luke, <clears throat> he's been going around the villages and teaching and preaching and casting out demons and healing. And he's had a few run-ins with some of the religious officials of his day because, you know, for instance, he healed a woman on the Sabbath. And that was a big no-no. And, you know, people couldn't get past this wondrous healing they all got all hung up on, he broke the rules, he did it on a Sabbath, and, and all that sort of thing. And then that's what immediately precedes this section today. So, so for me, I'm a little bit suspicious about the authenticity or genuineness of the Pharisees' concern for him when they approach him and say, you better get out of here, Herod's trying to kill you. I think, I don't know, were they just trying to get rid of Jesus, you know, shuffle him on to the next village or something? On the other hand, it's a fear and a threat that Jesus needed to take seriously. I mean, what had Herod just done to John, right? His cousin. So he needed to take it, take it seriously. But look at his response to Herod. He says, you go tell that fox for me. And he is not going to be um, diverted from his mission. Nothing is going to throw him off track. He has a clear vision. He has a clear commitment. He has an awareness of what God is calling him to do. And nothing, especially fear of somebody like Herod, it's not going to throw him off track. And I've been thinking this week about, isn't there something in that for us? I mean, we can so easily in our discipleship you know, we can get sidetracked with other little concerns and busyness and, and all these sorts of things, but, but we disciples don't ever let fear or fear of other people throw us off track, do we? I mean, I love the, the, the words of that psalm we had today, right? Isn't it just so clear? The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? Who would we need to be afraid of? The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom then shall I be afraid? Are we afraid of the Herods of this world? Dare I say it, the Putins of this world? I mean, we can see what they can do, but there is a power that is higher and greater and a power of life and love that goes beyond this life. We can't let fear throw us off track in our discipleship. And so there's that first part of that gospel story. And then Jesus, is, when he's, he's responding to that question, he has this really curious image for himself and for God. A hen. As a hen gathers her chick, it is chicks under her wings. That is not the image that they wanted to hear or with which they were familiar. You think about all the Old Testament images, and this goes right again to the heart of that issue of what kind of Messiah is he? And he was supposed to be the Lion of Judah. You know, a roaring, ravenous lion, a big, powerful beast. Or the eagle of Isaiah. Or the leopard of Hosea. And what image does Jesus pick? A hen sheltering its chicks from the fox. I don't know if many of you have much experience with uh, chickens and keeping chickens, and when a fox comes along or a raccoon gets in the coop or something like that, they absolutely scatter. And that's the way of our world with tyrants like Herod. They scatter, they divide. They issue dictums about who the good people are and who the bad people are and who's worthy and who's unworthy. And, but you know, it's not just tyrants. Haven't we had 
a few years now in our society of division after division after division after division and I think even once we start coming out of this uh, this pandemic and all of these restrictions you want to know what I think is going to be the next hot potato item is whether or not we wear masks and then we're going to make that into a right wing versus left wing thing or some silly stuff I've always said of uh, you want to know you know you're not supposed to ever mention politics from a pulpit or something you know I don't know what my politics are I would like to see the party of good ideas that's it I don't really care whether it's a right-wing thing a left-wing thing. like it I will just want good ideas we've had so much division and scattering in this world the last few years God doesn't divide and scatter. God pulls people together. God heals divisions. The priority for us is a loving life, an empathetic life, a compassionate life. Even with all those people with whom we might disagree on this issue or that issue or any of that stuff, disciples of Jesus following his example bring people together, bring healing into the lives of the people around us. And that's what I see in this text for us, in this image of a, a hen gathering its chicks. If you think about that image, the hen is, is giving its life, right, to protect the chicks, like what Jesus will be doing in a few weeks' time, is offering himself for us. And so surely we can follow his example of no more division, no more polarization. I don't want to, in my life, participate in that stuff. I want to put energy and time and passion into how do we pull people together? How do we heal the divisions in our world? Enough of division and polarization. And so maybe every one of us, perhaps, we need to think about, where are those polarizing voices in my life? those polarizing forces in my life. What am I going to say no to? I am not going to participate in that. And instead, dedicate our lives, our energies, our passions to healing, to bringing people together, to a witness of what is it to live a loving life. Amen.